wasn't any better than this. She's safe, she's fast, she brings in a lot of fish. She's something you can trust, and she needed to be saved. Mm-hmm. <laughs>
There wasn't any better than this. She's safe, she's fast, she brings in a lot of fish. She's something you can trust, and she needed to be saved.
Good evening and welcome to the adventure, the spring fundraiser for the Schooner Adventure. My name is Tony Toledo and I'll be your host for the evening. And I'm Stefan Edick, the Executive Director. And we'd like to welcome you all to tonight's event and thank you for joining us to raise the funds for the vessel we all love. Absolutely. And Stefan, we have got a great program today. We're going to have some wonderful performances by Alan Estes and Chelsea Berry. I'm going to be able to tell a little story over here. And then we're going to talk to extraordinary volunteer Phil Dunn really is. and more. We're also hosting an auction tonight. Many of you may know about it, but it's full of outstanding items for everyone to enjoy. There are wonderful experiences. There are beautiful artwork and handcrafted pieces. Lots more. You can, I want to thank everyone who's bid already and hope that everybody is here ready to bid and participate. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. And you know, I know that you have Fund the Future. Could you tell me a little bit about that, Stefan? Sure, thank you. That's an important part of our event every year and the Fund the Future is uh, especially important this year after the ship has been laid up for 18 months. This year in particular, two generous donors have provided a $15,000 match for our Fund the Future segment. That means that every dollar you, you donate will be matched one for one up to that $15,000 amount. It's a way to connect people directly with what the ship needs to operate, to take ship sailing, kid, uh, children sailing, and to continue to be preserved at a high level. That is just beautiful. There's so much that goes on with the adventure, and sailing is such a great part. Now, I heard that the 50 top donors tonight are going to be able to go on a sail? That's true. The 50 most generous individuals tonight will get an exclusive invitation to Adventure's first voyage or voyages of the year. And that's going to be especially significant after we've been laid up for 18 months. And you know, Tony, Adventure is more than sailing. Adventure is a vibrant community of really dedicated people. And everybody here tonight is helping to support that community and keep it and Adventure strong. Oh, so pleased to be a part of it. So am I. I'm really honored. So thank you for being here to help raise the funds to keep Adventure strong and sailing and enjoy the program. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and look who's here. I've come here to find out everything I can about the Schooner Adventure, and I was told you're a person to talk to. Well, yes, I am, Tony. I'm Betsy Hoffman, Director of Development, and I want to welcome everyone to This Is Adventure, our online auction and fundraiser. Ooh, you've clicked onto the right thing, people. We're going to have some fun tonight. Now, what's happening with this auction, Betsy? Well, I'm glad you asked. We uh, hope that everyone has already registered for this auction. They've been bidding up a storm this week leading up. But if you haven't yet, go click on the button below and register for the auction now. Wow, nice. And how can people do that with the auction and watching things? Yeah, so we recommend viewing the event on the computer, but using your phone to do the bidding. So. Ooh, smart. <laughs> you can get two for one and have both of them. Yeah. Nice. Is there any aid for helping like people like me that are a little slow on things? Yes, we've got a call number below and also a link to help you figure it all out. Now, is it true that they're going to have a chat on this too? Yes, um, you can engage with people on the chat and you'll see it just uh, right next to the video here. Oh, I would love that to put on there. Have you been on the adventure too? And all the other people are clicking on, oh yeah, that's great. Yeah, we hope people will have some fun with it. That sounds nice. Wow, and where does all this money go that's gonna be raised with this auction? Well, this is going to preservation for the vessel. It's going to operating the vessel at sea and it's also going to our educational program. Oh, all of those are just great things. And this vessel built in 1926 is still going strong. And thanks to everybody here, all of you at the Schooner Adventure and all the people bidding tonight. Now, do you have corporate sponsorships too? We sure do. And I wanna thank everyone for supporting this event, but especially I wanna thank our corporate sponsors for their support for tonight and also for sending the Schooner Adventure to sea with a purpose. Our corporate sponsors are at the anchor level, Interlux Paints. They just donated a boatload of paint to us. Beautiful. And I wanna thank our Compass sponsors, Bank Gloucester, Cape Ann Savings Bank. I wanna thank our Halyard sponsors, Boston Harbor Hotel, Building Center, Capital Management Partners, 
Engel and Volkers, Groom Construction, Manchester Marine Brocks Industries, Precision Roofing Services of New England, and Safeport Financial Associates. Whoa, that's a, that's a mouthful. And I want to thank our Dory sponsor, Lark Fine Foods. Wow, that's beautiful. I and all of these corporations and these businesses are sponsoring and supporting the Schooner Adventure. And ladies and gentlemen, I think you should too. This auction is a perfect chance to go ahead and get something wonderful for yourself and support the adventure. What do you think? Should they bid more? Yes, I want you to bid up and I want you to bid often. But I also want everyone to know that the auction extends beyond this event so that you don't have to miss any of the excitement. You can bid after this is done up to about a half an hour. Beautiful. Thank you, Betsy. Hi, I'm Adi Souza. And I'm John Jakes. We're the event chairs for this evening. Thank you for being here with us tonight from our home to your home. We always love having fun with our Schooner Adventure community. Too bad we can't be here in person. We're glad that you're here though. Enjoy this event tonight with our fabulous MC, Tony Toledo. Bid high, bid often, and have a great time. Hello, Stefan. Now, I have a question for you. What's your involvement with the Schooner Adventure? Well, I've been a, a captain and now I'm our executive director and I'm excited. This is my passion, these old ships with education programs and maintenance and preservation and sharing their history. Wow, I just know that when I look at the Schooner Adventure, I feel like I'm looking at a piece of living history that's right here in Gloucester. Now, I gotta ask, where's the Schooner Adventure docked? Schooner Adventure is docked on the Harriet Webster Pier right behind Maritime Gloucester. Now, Stefan, What's going to be happening over here? What's going on with the Schooner Adventure? What's in the future? Well, I'll uh, talk, tell you about the immediate future. This is exciting. Uh, the winter coverage just come off. We're getting ready to, uh, to get it back out on the water. Uh, we're heading to the shipyard at the end of the month for, uh, for the first time in a couple of years to do the work that, that we need to do to, to keep her healthy and strong. Oh, that's got to be such a great feeling. The whole thing with this pandemic, to now be able to start to loosen up and get back on that vessel again. What do people do with this when they get out sailing? What's happening? We take folks out and first and foremost, we introduce everybody to what it means to be a dorymen on a schooner-like adventure that went out onto the banks and filled her hold with fish. Second, in this day and age, we use her as an educational platform for students of all ages. I gotta say that as a student, if I was a student, it's one thing to see a picture in a book. It's a whole nother thing to be stepping onto history to this vessel that was made in 1926. It is an enormously heady experience for students. They learn things about communication, teamwork, and so much more. Um, we teach about STEM topics and the traditional nautical uh, subjects like navigation and, and piloting, the physics of sail. The whole kit and caboodle is right there, but that hands-on, vivid experience of being at sea is what ties it all together and makes it really unique. I just heard a thing that I didn't know only last month. They said when the sea shanties, when people are singing, that they got the long O's so that people would open their mouths as they pulled. So as people are hauling up the, the dories and they're doing the trawls, I mean, now was always the adventure, was the ship always out there putting the fish on ice? That's correct, yes. Yeah, she was built in an era where ice was more common than salt. So she would go out with a fish, a, a hold full of ice, um, much like in the present day and come back with it with a hold full of ice down fish. Wow, beautiful. And what are you hoping that's gonna happen with the funds that come from this auction? Well, first and foremost, we take care of the preservation of adventure. We've been really aggressive to stay ahead of the curve. All of the incredible restoration work, that's something that's gone on is something that we oh want to keep. Oh my gosh, I think of my wooden house and my house is on a hill and you've got a wooden vessel that's in salt water. That's correct. It makes the challenge that much bigger. Right, but you guys are doing it and you're keeping this vessel. And I heard that there was a hundred times when this vessel could have been lost, when things could have happened, but it always, it's come back and it's landed now in the, the Gloucester Harbor for everybody and the whole North Shore to be able to visit. That's right, she said the, the stories in her history are incredible. And like Joe Garland said, she's a survivor. Absolutely. And a good thing too, she represents the, uh, the resiliency and the courage and the, the, the perseverance of the fishermen and the communities that supported them, their families. 
I think when you go out over here, and fishing is a way of life, and this is a part of fishing that's done, di it's, it's a, the trawling and having the dories is such a different way from what people are doing when they're going out and they're dragging, and you got these giant vessels out there to see the adventure and to be on that, and to walk on those planks, to me, is just magical. So I'm glad that you've got that. I'm glad you're involved. I'm glad that we're over here. And let us know, we're gonna be able to help you and people can come in and we all, sh I wanna visit the adventure the next time she's out floating. And what are the things you're working on with the adventure? We are working on um, education programs in particular. Uh, we don't know what we're going to be able to do this year, but we continue to build our program partnerships. Let me tell you about this wonderful thing we're doing with Girls Inc. of Lynn. We've developed a, a whole program focused on oh. STEM education and, and maritime careers. And they're working with us to, to develop curriculum that we can use for other groups going into the future. That is fantastic. I think doing something like that, you might get a couple of girls that are so excited that they're gonna become sailors for the rest of their lives too. That's the idea. Even if they only become sailors for a few years, they can take the lessons and the experience and bring them into whatever it is that they choose to do with the rest of their careers. Absolutely, and when I go out onto the water, I see a whole different perspective of the coast than when I'm you know, on my bicycle riding along the street. I love going out on the water. When do you think you'll have the adventure sailing again? Tony, I'm really happy to say that we're announcing right here for the first time that we will be underway on July 1st of this year. Um, we don't know what the guidance is going to look like then, but it will give us an opportunity to get you out and about after being cooped up and reconnect you with each other and our heritage. I love that idea. I've been in my house all winter spending most of the time over there, and now to get out on this deck and you got this fresh air, how long do the sails usually last? We usually take people out for about three hours. Wow, that's a long time, that's beautiful. Seems like a long time, but it goes by really quickly and everybody gets intoxicated with the experience and nobody notices that three hours have gone by. Oh, it's the kind of thing I have to say that when I've gone out before, it was a long time ago, I wish it would have been longer because it's so much fun. I'm a landlubber from Ohio, and to get out onto the adventure is just magnificently wonderful to be able to be there. Thank you so much for everything you're doing for the adventure. Thank you for all the people that are gonna be able to bid and be able to allow the adventure to do more for education, more for preservation, more. And what was that one thing you said? You told me there was a comment you saw about the adventure. It was wonderful. I saw a post over the winter, and the comment was, it's like the whole town pitched into Adventures Restoration. Oh, I love that. And I invite you to be a part of the continuing history of the schooner adventure. Stefan, here's to the adventure. Here's to the adventure. Long may she sail. Long may she sail. Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard a lot about the adventure tonight. And if your appetite is whetted for more, just like mine is, pick up this book, Adventure, The Last of the Great Gloucester Dory Fishing Schooners by Joe Garland. Now the adventure is 95 years old and she still floats. And let me tell you, you might think that that was just a given that from the beginning when she was commissioned in 1926 and floated out of Essex, that that was just smooth sailing all the way. Here's a little story out of this book that shows you that there were a few rough seas. In December of 1933, Captain Jeff Thomas was out of Sable, ba Sable Banks and was over there fishing for cod and haddock, and they had 40,000 pounds into the hold iced down on the adventure. And the, all of a sudden, the seas were calm, but then a storm blew up. And let me tell you, it was a storm, and it blew, and it was mighty, and the waves were crashing over. They're going along, and they thought, oh my gosh, we've got to get to port. And Captain Thomas says, we've got to make for Sleet Harbor, Nova Scotia. And the danger with that, Sleet Harbor, it was a narrow channel that you went through, and there were rocks on both sides. And people could have, the vessels could have crashed there. And he thought, I've got to try though, because on the open sea, it's gonna be lost. So he's in there, and Captain Thomas, he's going along, and it's December 24th. And he's going in thinking, I've got to get into this harbor. And all of a sudden, crash! The vessel shores up against the rocks. And some of the sailors thought, oh no, we've got to abandon. And they jumped into the dories. And Captain Thomas said, no, stay, man, stay. We can save the adventure. And he talked them into coming back in. 
they cracked some of the adventure that was taking on water, and all the sailors, the fishermen, they were bailing and bailing and bailing. And Captain Thomas says, we've got to go ahead and take one person, take one dory and go in, see if you can find a tug, and I'm sure a tugboat would be able to pull us off of these rocks. So one man volunteered and got in in the middle of the storm to go in that dory and row into the harbor. And there on that vessel, the people were bailing. All of the sailors, they were bailing and bailing and bailing. And it went for Saturday night, all day, Sunday, Sunday evening. And then that, why wouldn't you know what? The tug arrives and they get there and the tug does pull them off of the rocks, but they still have to keep bailing. And they bailed and bailed and bailed. While they were on the rocks, they had thrown out 40,000 pounds of fish that they just caught to lighten the vessel. They threw overboard 6,000 pounds of bait, but that little bit more buoyancy helped pull them off the rocks and they had to keep bailing. They bailed for 104 hours. And then they got into harbor and they found that the keel had been broken on the adventure, but the adventure was repaired so that she was able to sail again. And wouldn't you know it, Captain Thomas sent a letter to his daughter. I thought it time to write you a few lines to let you know that I am alive and well, but that is all I can say. I suppose you, you've heard all kinds of stories of what's happened. Well, it's been a pretty hard trip all around, and it's far from being any better, for the trouble is now to get the vessel fixed and the crew satisfied. That crew was satisfied, and that vessel was fixed. That vessel, the Schooner Adventure, sails out of Gloucester Harbor this very day. You can go over and see the adventure. You can look at the pier. If you happen to be there, just go out and gaze upon this. You'll be looking at living history. I invite you to take a sail on the adventure. I invite you to look at it. I invite you to help out. You'll be part of the living history of this magnificent schooner. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, we have a singer-songwriter who is a magnificent wordsmith, who is a wonderful performer, who's known throughout Cape Ann and known throughout New England and nationally touring. He's a man that's got a magic with his words. Ladies and gentlemen, Alan Estes. Hello, folks. Alan Estes here from Gloucester, Massachusetts. Proud to uh, be a part of uh, your fundraiser for the Schooner Adventure. Absolutely, I played on the boat. Um, I've been to weddings on the boat, been for sales on the boat, and it's a wonderful thing for me and many people around Gloucester to see the Schooner Adventure in full sail out in Gloucester Harbor, because that's what we all used to see for many, many years here. Uh, call me old school, but um, love seeing those sails up, so keep, keep it going. First song about Howard Blackburn. Uh, um, I was inspired by a book called The Lone Voyager by Joe Garland. Joe Garland, a big supporter of the Schooner Adventure through the years. Here's my song about Howard Blackburn. Storm of a trawling made in 1883. With frostbit hands, I rode for land 60 miles away. Part time before he froze to death, had nothing to say. He said, Howard, you won't make it to shore. There ain't no power in your hands anymore. But I said, One thing, the survivor under. Sailed to Europe in a tiny sloop alone. They laughed and 
Well, I did it twice and broke their scarping tone. They said, power, you shouldn't sail anymore. There ain't no power in your hands like before. But I said one thing, this survivor understands. Oh, you sail with your heart, not with your hands. You sail with your Glosterman, who would not turn up dead, who heard the pains of victory instead of what they said. They said, power, you shouldn't dream anymore. There ain't no power in a man who's not whole. But I said one thing, this survivor understands. You dream with your heart, not with your head. Survivor understand. Yeah, you dream with your heart, not with your hands. Hey! Woo. Woo Always for you, Joe Garland. Okay, next song, which I always dedicate to the Noble family, because this song is called Corinthian, and um, they were fishermen from a long line uh, until, which I'm going to play for you in the song. Um, this this is, the event happened, which changed their whole family's lives. I always dedicate this to. Um, uh, Jerry Noble, and um, it's called Corinthian, and it goes like this. Cut her right in two. Say 
Six fishermen were lost that day It was more than half the crew And among them was his grandpa Who was killed before he knew If the good Lord let his grandson make it through The Corinthian sailed out of Gloucester, where fate is the fisherman's friend. Just one of a thousand disasters, the faithful abide till the Fog half a century ago, but Gloucester will honor forever men who were lost down the road. One freed hit Corinthian and cut her right. Six fishermen were lost that day, it was more than half the crew. And among them was his grandpa, who was killed before we knew. If the good Lord let his grandson make it That day it was more than half the crew, and among them was his grandpa, who was killed before we knew that the good Lord let his grandson take it through. Not far off the coast of Nova Scotia. Disaster, a young sailor in his log. Love you. That was an amazing story you just shared. Why, thank you, Betsy. And that musical performance by Alan, wow. That oh, was so inspirational. He is, he's wonderful. <laughs> no, I just wanted, I was just thinking over here, why should we preserve the adventure? Well, I'm glad you asked that question, Tony. I've been so impressed with how the community and the Friends of Adventure have taken care of her and supported her in the past but it's especially important now. Right now, 
when we've all been cooped up for the last year and not able to go out and, and inter interact with people and um, have authentic experiences, adventure provides that. When you get on board, all your senses are engaged and you feel that she has endured. So I think that's very important right now. And something that's also really near and dear to my heart is the cultural heritage that adventure represents. She's a living history vessel and it's what inspires us and feeds our soul. That kind of authentic experience. Wow. And I think that the, we have the corporate sponsors, we have all the people bidding on here. What are a couple of things in the auction, some highlights? Well, there are uh, so many great items and I'm, I'm so encouraged by seeing everybody bidding on them in, in great ways. But uh, there are two items that I think really stand out. The uh, first one is called the Boston Adventure and it's a private cruise on board adventure all the way to Boston for three couples. You get the vessel to Whoa! yourself. But not just that. Fantastic. Yeah, you get a um, picnic gourmet lunch on board. On oh, the it way. just gets better and better. <laughs> and then upon arrival at the courthouse pier, there will be cocktails. Then you disembark and you go to your hotel rooms at the Boston Harbor Hotel. They've donated three hotel rooms. Oh my gosh. And it includes dinner for six at the Rose Wharf Sea Grill. And then the following morning, you get picked up by a limo and brought back. Oh my gosh, what a great item to be able to bid on. So I think that something like that, if it's a little bit more than what I could do, I get to talk to my other friends and say to those other two couples, hey, you guys in? Come on, listen to this, this will be magnificent. That's right, you could uh, get together and purchase it together. So. And I just have to say that I've been inside a lot this winter and to be out on deck on the adventure, it just be that sea air. I oh know. my gosh. That kind of authentic experience, you just can't replicate that. Oh, and it's that kind of thing, you know, where you talk about something like that. We have so much virtual reality in this world. And here we have the actual reality <laughs> of being on an actual schooner floating out on the actual seas, taking the actual trip into Boston. What a trip. What a yeah. trip. There you are. Um, and we have another great item too. I just can't wait to tell you about this one. Um, it's our dinner on deck. It's a great item that uh, has been very popular in the past. And it's um, dinner with nine of your closest friends or family on board the Schooner Adventure. But this year we have uh, a chef from Frank's in Beverly. I don't know if you know that restaurant. Oh, but... fantastically delicious. Yes, and um, it was started by uh, Frank McClelland, who was with Les Balliers in Boston. So that's, that's a- uh... Top of the line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to say any more, but um, no, oh, it's a, it's a magical that night. meal on the adventure. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, go ahead and bid now. <laughs> See if you can get it. But wait a minute, I'm gonna go grab my phone and bid myself. Ladies and gentlemen, here's some fantastic highlights of the auction coming up now that we, you can bid on. Audie Zuz's The Painting of the Adventure at the Dock. Mary Baker's Photographs of the adventure. These are framed in sycamore that was used the same tree the same wood that was used on the adventure To go ahead in the captain's cabin so you can get this beautiful uh, The photographs and you have these they're framed over there and they're by Greg Bover and they're just beautiful Leslie Heffron's a colorful painting of the Good Harbor uh, Life Beach chair is very cool and Nubar Alexander uh, Alexanian's extraordinary photograph of the fishing vessel in George's Bank. And Mary Rhinelander's beautiful monoprints of the adventure in the schooner race. And there's a wonderful maritime painting by Dick Brooks. And there's more. You can have golf at the Essex County Club, a curator's tour, a curator's tour of the Peabody Essex Museum to go ahead and see the secrets there. Fancy rope work by Captain Robert Wheeler and lots more for every purse. And best of all, you've got plenty of time to still bid on these auctions and lots more.
Ladies and gentlemen, this next auction item is a rare treat, fantastic. There's a singer-songwriter who is beloved in Rockport and tours nationally. You might have seen her, Chelsea Berry. I've seen her at the Shailen Lou. 900 seat theater, she's there, puts on a fantastic show. Her voice fills the entire Shailen Lou. But this summer, her voice is going to fill the schooner adventure. There's gonna be a sale this summer that you can bid on. There's only gonna be 40 or 50 people on board and Chelsea Berry is gonna do a private concert for all the people on board that sale on the adventure. You could be a part of that. You could have that kind of memory with just being able to see Chelsea on the a schooner adventure. She's never done a full concert before. This is the first time and you're going to be on it when you bid on this. Ladies and gentlemen, just to give you a taste of what you're gonna get on that cruise, here is the fantastic Chelsea Berry. Hey everybody, thank you so much for having me. So glad to be here with you. We were born before the wind Also younger than the sun Bonnie boat was warm as we sailed into the mystic. Hark now, hear the sailors cry. Smell the sea and feel the sky. Let your soul and spirit fly into the when that fog on those I will be coming home Yeah, when that fog on whistle blows I wanna hear it Sure. What a beautiful boat. What a magnificent boat. I have um, a lot of love for that boat for a lot of reasons, but um, one of them, which I found out just after doing a sail back from Boston on it, that my grandparents, who have since passed away, 
took a sail on the adventure decades ago. So it's very close to my heart. And um, as many of you know, they've just done an incredible job of creating community and they have youth educational programs. And if you've been on the boat, you know that Stefan and the crew are just over the top excited to share everything they know about the boat, its history, the restoration. Um, so this is a wonderful cause that we're here for today. And one of the things that's being auctioned off is a sail with me. So bid on this sail, bring your friends, three hours in the water, I'll play for you. It'll be a blast. Can't wait to hang and reel face to face. So this is a song, a little levity for you. taking ourselves too very seriously. Got a mile high to-do list Got my panties in a twist Got the pressure of perfection Weighing on my mind What I wouldn't give to be Kicking back in Hawaii Umbrella in my glass and not looking at the time, just singing. La da 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 la da 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 da. La da 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 la da da da. I spilled my fancy latte and I popped a button off my pants. I should have gone back to bed and started tomorrow new. Spent my very last dime on a hundred dollar parking fine And I'll get paid up Benjamin to sing this song for you Sing it da 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 Fortune's not a friend to me. I'm single that I'm unlucky. But perhaps inside every human being, there lies a drama queen. be reminded that life is full of good and bad it's not all about me and we're all just taking turns so when it seems that life ain't fair maybe i'll just move my chair to the sunny side won't you meet me there and we'll sing la da 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 I got the pressure of perfection weighing on my mind. I'll see you soon. Why, hello, sir. I heard that you're a volunteer on the adventure. Well, that's true, and I'll tell you, who wouldn't want to volunteer on the schooner adventure? Let me tell you the ways I love working on the adventure. First of all, I get to sail this 121-foot, traditionally rigged, historic schooner, the living history of the North Atlantic fisheries. I get to sail her. Not alone, of course. It takes 10 people to sail that boat, at least. But that gives me the opportunity to work as part of a team of fantastic sailors. How many people do you think trod on those boards that you're sailing on, the history that you have there? In a hundred years, they went out with 27 people on each trip, 24 fishermen, 
a cook, an engineer, and a captain. So what? In a hundred years, how many people? I can't even count. I, my math, I'm not that good at math, Tony. I'm sorry. No, that's remarkable. How did you get started volunteering? Well, I got hooked in. You know, you walk down on the pier, and you take a look at the boat, and people aboard start talking to you, and all of a sudden, the hook is sunk, and you're caught. So that's the danger. So anyways, I get to sail her. That's yep. awesome. I also get to preserve her and maintain her. And you know, people have their own little boats, and you scrape and paint in the spring, and it's drudgery. You do it so that you can sail your boat in the summer. But on the adventure, we are preserving a historic treasure. We hope we'll keep her going for another 100 years. So I get to go down and work with, again, a very talented team of people doing the preservation work on this beautiful boat. Now, Betsy was talking about the paint, and they had the sponsor for that. Now, what kind of paint do you put on the bottom to preserve it? Oh, it's some kind of fancy high-tech stuff. We, we make that concession to modern day on, the, on this historic schooner to take good care of her. So, yeah, we're not using the old copper paint that was made at the copper paint factory right there in Gloucester. Then there's one more way, in addition to the sailing and the preservation, we get to tell her story, and it's an easy story to tell. It is so fascinating, the history of the, the folks who lived and worked and fished on these schooners. Wow. It's crazy. So those, that's why I'm a crazed volunteer on the Schooner Adventure. Now, do you still need other volunteers to come in and help, or is we, everything covered? Always, always. It's another way that folks can help give to this, the preservation of this vessel and her operation and her place here in Gloucester. So yeah, every day people can get, we need people. We're always trying to bring in more folks. The more folks that are involved as volunteers, the more we have the sense that this is our boat. This is the Gloucester fishing school. Would I be adventure. able to volunteer? I mean, I grew up on a soybean farm in Ohio. I don't know a lot, but I'd be able to follow direction. Totally. And we, we have great training. We bring in a lot of green green folks. That would be me. And what kind of stuff would I be able to do? You'd learn how to coil lines and raise sails. You'd learn how to scrape and paint on an old schooner. You'd hey. learn how to take a turn at the helm and steer the vessel. You'd learn how the command structure, the way it works on a vessel for a team to be able to sail a, a boat of this sort. And, we, and you'll learn the stories so you can oh. tell them to other people. It's awesome. Oh, you are selling me on it, Phil. But I also heard, is this true, that you got an award for being a volunteer? I, I did. The Tall Ships America, which is like this North American uh, consortium of all the tall ships, uh, honored me uh, very, I was really flattered, uh, as the Tall Ships America Volunteer of the Year for 2020. Fantastic! And, and Congratulations, I, I, well, sir! Well, thank you. You know, I saw it really as a tip of the hat to the whole volunteer program of the Schooner Adventure. Um, and my name was, was on the plaque, but, you know, it was really the team. We stepped forward last year with no paid crew, and we did all the work on this historic schooner that has to be done to keep her in perfect shape. How long have you volunteered there? Oh, I started in around 1990 and was on involved for about five years. Then I took a break while I was raising family yep. and stuff. And then four, four years ago, I came back and right away the hook and got sunk just, again. Oh, beautiful. It's, and I just admire all the volunteers that were able to cross all of Gloucester, across the North Shore, to be able to come in and help out. And I got a feeling when I volunteer, if I can go ahead and Shanghai you for another couple minutes, I bet there's 8,000 more stories you could tell me. Well, there are, but I'm afraid they're probably going to cut me off oh, in terms yeah. of this gotta program. Got to go back to work. I yeah. gotcha. And, 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 you know, but if folks do want to get involved, go to the website to become a volunteer or just come on down to the dock. We're down there working every, pretty much every day now. Come down and we'll talk to you and we'll sink the hook. There's a risk. There's a disclaimer I got to give here. Once that hook gets sunk, you could end up like a crazed volunteer, just like me. Oh, I love that. That joy, the passion that comes through your voice. I'm going to raise a toast to your great adventure, to the adventure of the vessel, to you going out over there and volunteering and helping so much. Long may the adventure sail. Thank you, sir. Now, I know in 2020, the schooner adventure wasn't sailing. She was docked. But what was happening on the adventure the whole time that she was staying on harbor? You know, it, it's interesting, Tony, because we started out the year disheartened when we learned we couldn't sail. And of the course. Winter, the decisions made keep the winter cover on the boat. But we took that disappointment and used it into opportunity, turned it into opportunity. What did you do? So 
with the winter cover on, we could do all of the annual maintenance that you have to do on a 121 foot wooden schooner. Oh, it's a huge amount of work. you're under cover of the weather then. So we could, we could work on her all summer long, all volunteers, all yep. volunteers. What kind of stuff were you doing? And scraping and painting, uh, prepping the spars, the booms, uh, the gaffs, all of that. We rebuild a uh, hundred blocks that are the block and tackle for, for the ship. Oh, we, magnificent. We did deep stuff that we never can get to in terms of we have new ladders into both, both of the uh, living areas. We did some d deep maintenance uh, in terms of uh, the metal work on the, on the ship. Uh, we rebuilt the dock that people walk across as they come onto the oh, vessel. Magnificent. Totally rebuilt. I think that's great. So you really took what could have been a disappointment and turned it into this beautiful joy about working and making the adventure even better than she It was. ended up being an opportunity, really, to, through a volunteer effort to make this vessel even healthier and stronger coming into this 2021 season when now we can sail. You rock! All yes, right! Yes, sir! Ladies and gentlemen, you still have time, plenty of time, to bid on the live auction. It's going to be going until 7.30, so you've got plenty of time to go check out things. Bids are coming in, and we're really grateful you're participating. Again, lots of really exciting things, and, and thank you for, for being part of this. And you could be part of the adventure. Now, I wanted to ask you, I heard about Fund the Future. Could you tell me a little bit about that, Stefan? Sure. A, a Fund the Future is an important part of our auction, and has been every year. And it's a way for our donor to connect directly with a set of resources and see where the, the impact of the donations go. It, um, unlike a, a, an auction auction, you're not taking something tangible away and bringing it home, but what you are is leaving something direct behind on the vessel. It has an impact, whether that's making sure that a student can go to sea or making sure that there are ropes to haul the sails up, that wood gets replaced when it needs to, all of those sorts of things. Magical. How many different levels do you have with that? There are several different levels, starting at 100 and running all the way up to 5,000. And we can see that several people have participated already. And again, folks, two generous donors have provided a $15,000 match for this Fund the Need auction tonight. So if your d donations would be matched dollar for dollar up to that amount. That is beautiful to be able to help do all those things. And I mean, I didn't realize just talking to you before that you had to go ahead and it cost so much to replace one of the planks and how it was curved on the vessel. And that's just one thing and there's a million other things that go on. So if somebody's just got a, a little bit, they can still contribute and they can help with this. Oh, absolutely. You know, a hundred dollars contributes to provisions for the crew. It provides a, a story time skippyar from the brilliant children's book for a group of young learners. It, um, it helps with the basics of maintenance and preservation. Wow, that's terrific. And I think that when we go ahead and contribute to that, that we're gonna be, to my way of thinking, there's this invisible thread throughout history. And it started where we had the schooner adventure built in 1926. And now in 2021, we still, there's so much stuff you guys did last summer to get the vessel fixed up, but we need the help of everybody because you can't do it without you know, having the resources necessary. That we do, and we're doing a lot of things with the traditional methods, very similar to what the, the shipwrights in the Essex Yards would have been doing a hundred years ago. And for instance, replacing a plank, and this is something that we do, I'm talking about aggressive approach to maintenance. We want to yep. stay ahead of the curve and make sure that she continues to be really well preserved and in good shape. Replacing a plank is a complicated piece of business. It requires a giant piece of oak, and each plank that we replace costs about $5,000. This year, just as, as a part of routine upkeep, we're going to do three of those planks. Wow, that's amazing to me that the, it keeps this vessel going. And I was shocked when I found out that, you know, the expected life of the vessel might have been 20 years. And you're over here getting this thing going, approaching 100 years with this real history right in Gloucester. You know, it is pretty amazing that the, the Essex-built working schooners, were, or, or working schooners anywhere, were built to last those 15 or 20 years. Most of them didn't make it that far. I mean, it was going to sea is an incredibly risky business, but it was just sort of the, the mean. The fact that Adventure has survived now for 95 years is, uh, is extraordinary and speaks Beautiful. really highly to the craftsmanship with which she was built. It also speaks really highly to the support that she's received since she returned back to Gloucester. That is so great. And now we're going to have, is it a raffle now? Oh, yes. This is an exciting and fun part of this. 
we are going to hold a drawing here in just a sec for sponsors for our event to see who won a pair of tickets to this year's schooner race. Oh, that, <laughs> that is magnificent. Would you do the honors? Let me shuffle them all up, make sure that they're all mixed up. Everybody's got a fair chance. Here we go, sir. Karen Newman and Thomas Brooks. Excellent. Beautiful. And I just want to say thank you to you, Stefan, to the staff, and to all the volunteers, and especially to all the people supporting the adventure and keeping this fine vessel in great shape. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tony. It's been a pleasure to work with you, and thank you all for attending the event tonight. As you know, this spring event is a big part of our year, and your participation tonight helps us get back out to where adventure belongs, out at sea, sailing with a purpose. We wanted to, uh, to thank all the people who participated in the program tonight. You'll see them all in the credits. We're really grateful for the, the performances by Alan Estes and Chelsea Berry. And <clears throat> we also want to let you know that the auction will be going on for a while yet. So up until 7.30, you'll have an opportunity to participate in both the Fund the Need side and the live auction side. So you can <clears throat> finish up here and wait just a moment before you sit down to supper. And if you could, peruse the auction and, uh, and make a bid. So thank you all very much for being here. Thanks for your dedicated ongoing support for adventure and have a good night. Thank you. 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 I'll tell you of adventure. The last story fishing soon. Launched in 26 out of Essex and Bess, and each year in the center of the They saw her gallant ship, but they could not know she'd be the best by far one day. Now she sails again, and she did. Oh,
Yeah. Uh -huh. 